Hey folks, Sonic fan here. I'm just working on repairing my Dell Optiplex uh, 9020, I think it's dash SFF, if it's the uh, the micro uh, under the desk version or whatever you want to call these, little mini uh, PC here. And I could not find any information on repairing these, so that's why I'm making this quick video. Um, long story short, I had a power light, it would come on, be white for... I don't know, a second or two, and then it would shut off. Fan would fan would turn on. Otherwise seemed fine. Uh, this only happened just out of the blue. I had been running a space heater in my room, so it was a little warmer than usual. Maybe that's what did it. I don't know. Um, and I replaced the RAM. That didn't do anything. I replaced the CMOS and reset the CMOS. That didn't do anything. I unplugged the display port board. That didn't do anything. So I was really worried because I was starting to suspect a lot of times when you have overheating issues, little crappy mini heat sinks like this will, will be your problem. Um, or, I mean, that's usually what it is. You know, there'll be like a video chip or North Bridge under there, South Bridge under there, and that'll just cook. Uh, it's not enough heat sinking, which, by the way, is why I'm going to be adding some extra heat sinking onto that guy using these little micro heat sinks. I got some nice little uh, elongated vertical ones, too. That gonna, I'm going to put here and here. Since I'm not using the uh, 2.5 inch hard drive, I'm going to be using the M.2. But uh, for those of you trying to fix this, what actually did the trick was uh, taking out the heatsink on a last ditch effort and replacing the processor. Um, was not expecting that. And I don't know if it's a reseeding issue or not. Seems unlikely it would be a reseeding issue. I'm hoping it's not like a you know, a pin connectivity issue from the flexing of the board. So there's there's a number of design flaws in this, but one of the one of the bad ones is that you have a lot of spring pressure uh, loading into this uh, this caddy for the CPU. And you know, for most motherboards, that spring pressure is is a bit harsh. But for a tiny one like this, like you can just hear the flexing of the board <laughs> when you put that down. Uh, it's kind of a cringe. So um, could be something related to that. Fingers crossed that it's not. Um, this might be a, a, a blessing in disguise, though, because I had an i3 in here. I did not know it was changeable. These kind of small computers, you can't normally change the processor. And uh, lo and behold, I recently uh, got donated an i7, uh, fourth gen i7. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm, I, I've got that in there now. I'm going to do. I'm going to apply a fresh coat of thermal paste. I just did all the lint-free, uh, you know, uh, thermal paste removal stuff. So, um, yeah, I'll probably post in the comments description, you know, how this goes in the long run. Um, you know, I, I usually do updates like that, you know, one month, three months, six months, that kind of thing. I plan on using this computer a lot. This is my main, like, coding computer. I don't use it as much as my other computers, but I use it uh, quite a bit for programming stuff. So uh, I'm going to put it all back together. Uh, hopefully the, the original RAM is going to be fine. This is just a donor to test it. But I don't think the RAM was the problem. What got it working was changing the processor. Um, I also have to be careful because this is the heat sink that comes for the processor and it's just, it's, it's dinky. It's kind of weak. And this thing gets pretty hot. I don't hear the fan cooking on, uh, kicking on as loud as it should. Um, so I'm a little worried that the thermal control in this isn't very good. Also, another very important note, very, very important. I hope you watch till the end of this video because um, the power supply, this is the other thing that might have killed it actually. This might have been my fault. I was using a smaller power supply, and on the back of this, uh, reading the specs, even though it works fine with the Dell 65 uh, watt power supply, um, it actually needs, um, what is it on the bottom here? 3.36 amps. So um, yeah, I was not giving it 3.36 amps, and uh, that, that could have very, very well could have damaged it, damaged and killed the processor. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, you know, I got, I got a little complaint with Dell here. One of the reasons they have this, this, uh, center pin, there's actually a center pin in there and it's a, it's a microprocessor. Um, it's a UART basically protocol that it communicates with the power supply and they do that. So you use their genuine power supply and previously in previous Dell laptops and stuff, it communicates with the motherboard and says, I'm a 65 watt power supply. And the BIOS will tell you, you're using the wrong power supply. That's how all Dell machines I've ever worked with, you know, work. And uh, they just didn't do that in this one, which was it's kind of shocking. And so uh, anyway, hope this video helps people. Um, when you see little rinky dink heat sinks like this, try to get some extra heat sinking on there. I never trust that stuff. Uh, if you have any cool hacks or ideas you've come up with for cooling this better, 
Obviously, the case works uh, as a pretty good uh, cooling me mechanism because it's uh, pretty solid aluminum, but it could use some more cooling, I think. This thing runs pretty, pretty hot, and it's going to run hotter since I'm beefing up the CPU here. We'll see how it goes. Sega Sonic fan, signing out.